Murphy and I'm so excited about today's tutorial. I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful light uh, and airy enhancement in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so this is our image and uh, this is our after enhancement. It's very clean, light, and airy. And this is the before image that we're working with. Once we're done, we'll have this beautiful uh, finished look to our image. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take the enhancements that I had applied and just put them in the trash so we can start fresh. Okay, so the first enhancement that I applied to this image, uh, I'm going to click on my little half circle down at the bottom of my layers panel. And I'm going to click on Hue Saturation, okay? Uh, this is a favorite of mine that I like to apply in a lot of my images. I'll bring the saturation up to 50. Now, obviously, it does look quite oversaturated, and that's fine. We're going to fix that here. So let's go ahead and change our blending mode from normal. I'm going to go down to uh, Lighten. Okay. Now, it, it might not look like there's a difference. Go ahead and click on the eyeball next to your layer and notice the before and the after, how there's just the right softness with saturation. So we're going to keep that right there at 100%. Okay. And next, I'm going to work on her skin. She was backlit in this image, so I really want to brighten up her skin and soften it a bit. So I'm going to click on Levels. Okay, I'm going to bring my mid-tone slider in towards the left to lighten her skin. I don't have any specific formula for this because every image is different, so you may have to brighten the skin a bit more than other images. I do like to, again, bring the mid-tone slider in towards the left. I bring the top right slider in towards the left as well just to brighten the skin a little bit, give it that nice healthy glow. Uh, and I don't want the skin to be too powdery, so I do bring in the top left slider to darken some of the darks and bring back some, um, some of the contrast into her skin, but not too much. And sometimes if there's some shadows, like I'm seeing here on her arm, I will also work with the bottom left slider to bring up the shadows a little bit and lighten them. Okay, now this is also a good time to work with the skin tone. If the, there's a little bit of uh, red tones in the skin that you'd like to remove, you can also do that in levels as well. Okay, so I'm going to click on RGB and go down to red. And I'm going to use the mid-tone slider. Notice how I bring it up towards the left. We get a little bit more red. And we're only paying attention to what uh, this is doing with the skin tones and not the rest of the image, okay? So if I move this down to about 96%, I'm really liking that tone. And I can go down to blue, bring it up a little, just a tad to bring out, um, to get out some of the blue in her, or the yellow in her skin tone. Um, okay, so I'm gonna exit out of there. And again, we only want this to be applied to her skin. Right now, it's applied to the entire image. So by default, there's automatically a built-in layer mask. I'm just going to invert it by pressing Control or Command I. And now it's filled with black. So remember, when working with layer masks, I say this all the time, but black conceals and white reveals. Okay, so our entire enhancement is being concealed because it's black. Um, I'm going to bring white to the foreground color here. Oops, you don't have to click on it. Uh, make sure your brush is selected. If you don't see it, just right click and click on your brush. My opacity is at 100%. And I'm just gonna make my brush smaller by using both uh, the left and right bracket keys. And I'm not being extremely careful here. I'm just, um, just brushing over her skin. There we go. Okay, so notice the difference that we're getting there. And sometimes I'll go back at the end of the edit and maybe make a few more changes just to make sure the skin tone is looking really good. Okay, so next we're going to create a gradient. I'm gonna scroll down to gradient map. Okay, and I'm just gonna click in the little box here. 
Now I had saved the colors that I wanted to use with this image. I'm just going to click on this box. Um, we're going to add really nice warm peachy tones. Okay, I'm going to keep the left a little bit darker and the right a little bit lighter. So to change the color, you can just double click on the bottom left dial and go in and select your color. And you can copy the location I have here as well. Okay, and then I'm going to double click on the bottom right dial. And this one's a little uh, bit of a lighter peachy tone. Again, you can copy the location that I have here as well. And press OK. OK, and I'm just going to exit out of there. And now we're going to keep this one at uh, the opacity. Um, we're going to bring it down and we're going to keep the, um, the blending mode to normal. Let's just bring that up to 15%. Notice that the before and after we're getting a, a nice airy kind of creamy tone on the image. Now, I don't want that to be completely applied to my subject because I really like to bring that focus in towards my subject. So I'm going to keep my brush selected, bring black to the foreground color because black conceals. I'm going to bring the opacity to about 30% make my brush a little bit larger, and I'm going to remove some of this enhancement from her. I never remove 100% of the enhancement because it, it tends to look pretty unnatural on the image. So I just want to remove some of that, maybe a little bit more on her face and her hair and her skin. There we go. So I really like that. Okay. We're going to keep that as is. Now I'm going to duplicate this layer to make it easy on myself. I'm just going to drag it down to this little square with the corner folded up in the, on the bottom left hand corner. Okay, And I'm going to make some changes to it. So this time we are going to change the blending mode. And I'm going to change it to soft light. Okay, I'm also going to double click on the layer. Okay, you're going to see the little the half circle there. Double click on it and just click reverse. Exit out. And I'm going to bring the opacity of this layer up to about 33%. Okay, now if you feel like you're still losing your subject a little bit, I think I'm going to actually remove just a tiny bit more now that we've added a little bit more haze to the image. I don't want that completely covering up my subject. Okay. I noticed how the mask had already duplicated. I just wanted to remove a tiny bit more just so she stands out from the background. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. There's three more steps until we're completely finished with this image. Um, we're going to select gradient and add a little bit of a soft light in this image. So starting off with the style uh, drop down box, we're going to select radial. And when you have this window open, you can simply click on your um, little ball of light, <laughs> as I'll call it in the tutorial, uh, and just move it anywhere within your image. So I'm going to bring it up to the top right here. Uh, you can play with the angle and kind of move it around, see how it's making the, the light larger and, and smaller. I'll keep it right there at 63. Now you can also click in the gradient box and change the color. So I'm going to, since we're going with more of a peachy theme, I'm just going to make this a really super light peachy tone. And I'm just double clicking on the bottom two left and right dials here. And press OK. Press OK. And we're going to keep that right at 100%. And next, we're going to click on Radiant again and create another uh, layer. And this time, we're going to click on Style, still sticking with Radial. We're going to reverse it and go ahead and check the Dither box as well. Now, the following um, settings are, it's not it's not always the same. I, these are just the settings that I like to select. You can definitely play with it and just make it your own uh, as well. So we're going to go to scale and bring that up to 49%. And we're going to go up to the gradient box and just click in there. And I'm going to bring the top right dial into 60%. Notice at the location it says 60 right here. 
okay? And now, again, I'm going to change the bottom left and right dial colors to a nice light peachy tone. Actually, I'm only going to do that to the bottom left dial. We'll keep the right one white and press OK. And we're going to bring the opacity down. It's pretty strong right now. I'm going to keep that right around 24%. Okay, so that's just adding to the light uh, and airiness of the image. Okay, last thing, we're going to create a, a center light to really just bring that attention in towards my subject. So again, we're going to choose gradient, change style to radial. I'm going to bring the angle down to about 45% and press OK. Now we're going to change the blending mode and put it on overlay. It's really quite bright, so I'm going to bring the opacity down uh, and I'm going to leave it right at 10%. Okay, notice the subtle difference that you're getting. Just really brightens up the center of the image and helps lead your attention in towards the subject. So one last thing actually that I'm going to do with this image is just create a little bit of sharpening over my subject. Okay, to do that, I'm going to scroll down and click on my background layer. We're going to duplicate it, so I'm just going to click and drag down uh, just how we had duplicated the previous layer. Okay, so now I'm working on my copy, and I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and select High Pass. And I usually like to keep my radius anywhere between 3 and 5%. You just want to make sure you can see the outline of your subject. Then again, you don't want it to be extremely strong. You still want to see, um, you know, just a, a light outline, I guess, is the, the way to go. Um, so I'm going to keep that right at 4.8 and press OK. Now we're going to switch the blending mode to overlay. And notice when I click on the eyeball, you can see that the blur is, uh, it, it goes away. Okay, because we're getting a lot more sharpening on her. Now it's a little bit too much because we're sharpening our subject. We don't want to over sharpen. I'm going to keep the opacity right at 40%. And I also want it to just be applied to my subject and not the entire image. So to do that, we're going to add a layer mask. I'm just going to click on this little triangle with the circle in the middle down here. Okay. And notice I did that while my layer that I was working with was still selected. So black conceals, I'm going to press Ctrl or Command I to conceal the entire enhancement and bring white to the foreground color. My brush is selected. Let's bring the opacity back up to 100%. Making my brush larger, again, I'm not being extremely careful. There's no need to be. It's just a really light sharpening. Uh, and I'm just brushing this right over my subject. Um, we're done. So let's go ahead and group these up real quick. New group. Okay, so this is the image that we had started off with, and just by creating a few layers, um, we were able to create a really nice, beautiful, creamy, uh, light, and airy enhancement. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was super fun for me to make, and definitely stick around for the next tutorial on how to create a lens flare and uh, cool retro effect in Photoshop. Thanks, guys.